perhaps the most powerful system is a system created by the interaction of the world and our perception of it. As we begin to change this system, we begin to profoundly alter what is possible. Within Western management, we've too narrowly defined learning. We've placed a great deal of emphasis on training and development, but almost no emphasis on experience and discovery. Organizations have to make unprecedented investments, not in machines, but in minds, not in buildings, but in the building blocks of learning. The way past generations had to learn how to create industrial capital, our generation has to learn how to create intellectual capital. There are changes within systems, and there are changes of systems. Odds are good that you've either begun or at least considered a change effort in your organization. You might label this change effort re-engineering, rethinking, or reinventing. But whatever the label, successful transformations always result in changes of systems. This new economic age is not the result of a hodgepodge of independent institutional revolutions occurring in schools and governments and corporations. Rather, it's a result of a single thought revolution. Your thinking is not something that goes on separate from reality. Your thinking defines your reality. Now during the next 30 minutes, I'll explain and give you a chance to experience a change in thinking. Here's an overview of some of the major points. One. New economic ages occur when people organize around new ways of thinking. Two, people create intellectual capital when they change their methods of thinking. Three, learning will change in this new economic age. No one can teach you how to succeed in the organizations you define. That kind of learning requires the creation of new knowledge. Four, systems thinking will do for our quality of life what reductionist thinking has done for our quantity of goods.